Thank you so much for coming. My name is Diana Aaron. For those of you guys who don't know me, I have a business called Chasing Linen where we specialize in watercolor portraits, live art, and I also teach watercolor portrait course, which is an online course um, where you'll learn how to paint watercolor portraits. So it's a ton of fun. I'm so thankful that I get to do this for a living and that I get to work with Michael's like I don't know. I know you guys are seeing me on your screen. So maybe you're like, oh my gosh, she must be some sort of professional. But the little girl inside of me is like dying. Like, I cannot believe I'm here with Michaels and with you guys. So thank you so much to Michaels for letting me be here and do something that I absolutely love. I've been basically painting and drawing my entire life, um, just to kind of share my story in a nutshell. And I've always wanted to pursue art and do art. But you know, just growing up, I didn't think that that was possible because, you know, people say like art is not a practical thing. And I tried to pursue different types of, you know, industries as I was studying in college. And I just kind of came to a realization, like I'm a creator, I'm a creative person, I'm an artist, and this is what I have to do with my life. Like I can't do anything else. And so I decided to pursue it full time. And from that moment, when I decided to fully step into myself, so many things started to unlock for me. I felt so in tune with myself. I even realized that um, it was actually making a positive impact, not only for my life and myself, but for other people as well, which was like mind blowing to me. So if you are in that place where you're you know, curious about art, not saying you have to pursue it pro professionally, but if you're like, I'm curious about art, but I'm not good at it. I just want you to know like you should never apologize for being curious about you know pursuing something creative and so i'm so thankful that you guys are here i'm so proud that you said yes um, to trying something new to learning something new i actually have a little uh bubble that's on my screen so i'm just gonna exit that out really quickly before i get started okay perfect there it is um, but yeah, I would love to continue to connect with you guys um, after this workshop. You can actually um, stay in touch with me on Instagram at Diana A. Ren. It's spelled a little bit funky. It's D-I-A-N-U-H-A-E-R-I-N. I know it's very complicated. I have two names that are both spelled funky, but whatever. Um, and then I also have a newsletter uh, where you can sign up and I actually send out art tips, free art tips every single week if you're interested in learning more of that. Um, I also have it on my little uh, note card right over here. But before we get started, um, I wanted to go over what we're gonna be working on today um, and make sure that you guys understand the different items that we're gonna be using. Um, every single thing that you see on my table, minus the plant pot that I'm using as my water cup, can be found on Michael's. Um, I actually got this all online and then they did like the one, the same day delivery, which is like crazy to me. Um, so, and all of the supplies are gonna be linked in the, um, in the class description as well. But let's just kind of quickly go over it before we dive into our loose floral painting. This is what we're gonna be painting today. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm actually a watercolor artist. That's my main medium of choice, but I grew up painting with acrylic. So it actually was so much fun doing this project because it reminded me of like all of my past memories. So it was just a lot of fun. But anyways, it kind of has that same loose watercolor e style um, using acrylic. And obviously there's different strengths with different mediums, but love this one because we get to do different types of textures, different types of um, painting techniques, which we'll go over today. So Let's dive into our material. So we have our round tip brushes right over here. Round tip basically means that you have like a pointed edge. Um, it's not flat or square. And I have, there's like a lot of sizes. Um, so you should have picked up this 12 pack right over here. And I might pull some brushes from these, this uh, section as well. But the main ones that I'm gonna be pulling out is a size 12, the size eight, six, four and one. Those are the five brushes that I'm going to be kind of rotating through. Um, I also have my little palette knives. These are plastic, um, but this helps me to mix my paint as well as um, there's going to be like a fun little dry brushing technique that we're going to be using with this. So I have that. And then I also have my um, square um, 12 by 12 canvas. 
and then my uh, paint palette, and then of course my paints. Um, these are the Artist Loft um, academic level one. And the, I, I believe it came with like 24 pieces, but out of the 24, I just chose 10. Um, so the colors that I'm gonna be using is Deep Red, Brilliant Red, Deep Yellow, Brilliant Yellow, Sap Green, turquoise, light blue, titanium white. I'm gonna be using a lot of these. Um, ivory black and burnt umber. So those are the 10 colors. And if you're interested, they also, this is like a seriously value deal. Like I'm not just saying this because I'm out of Michael's because when I opened it, I was like, it literally has so many things, but it also includes uh, a mold, uh, modeling paste, modeling paste, I believe that's what it's called. And it kind of thickens up your paint. If you want the florals to pop out more out of the page, then you can mix that in with your paint um, as well to kind of thicken it up and add more texture. And these are the 10 colors that I'm using, but feel free to, you know, swap out your, if you're like, oh, I actually really like the navy instead of the teal blue, then feel free to swap it out. Um, or if you're not like a pink person, then you can go orangey, you know, that kind of stuff. You guys can definitely customize. Um, but these are the colors that I chose because I'm actually gifting this uh, piece to my mom. She moved with me to Nashville, um, left California with me to help me with my watching my baby while I work. So this is my Valentine's Day gift to her. And these are her favorite colors, which is why I chose um, these colors. So make sure you can, you personalize to whatever, you know, colors that you're um, attracted to, but these are the colors that I'm going to be using. So um, I'm going to let you guys pick out your colors and then we'll get started right after that. Actually, one more thing. I also have a piece of, what is this called? Paper towel and a cup of water um, for my, you know, when I clean out my brushes. So, okay. So first things first, we are going to be painting the background color. This is going to be your base. And uh, we're going to paint kind of lightly because we want it to dry quickly so that we can jump right into the floral painting. Um, luckily, acrylic dries really quickly, so that's great. So for my beigey, mauve browny color, I'm going to grab white. Let me see, let me just move this. Um, so we can switch screens, perfect, thank you. So I'm gonna grab my titanium white. And I'm gonna just work on my background color first. We'll kind of lay out all of the rest of the colors um, after we have the, the base down so we can make sure that that's dry before we work on the actual painting. I'm gonna squeeze out some burnt umber, just a little bit. You know, I feel like we're gonna need more, so maybe let's just do more white. that much because um, it's actually a ton of white and then I'm going to do deep red and then deep yellow okay so grab your palette knife it's always easier to mix your colors with a palette knife um, so I'm gonna just basically grab all of this white. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab a little bit of the brown, the burnt umber, start mixing it in, and then the red as well. And then honestly, you're gonna kind of have to like eyeball this a little bit um, and go with, go with what color you like. But let's just mix that up. So to me, that's looking a little bit more pink than I'd like. So I'm gonna add more of the burnt umber and then even a little bit of that yellow. When it comes to color and painting, really, it's a really intuitive process. Um, it's not, there is some, you know, formula and technique to it for sure, but I think it's very intuitive. It's like whatever, you know, speaks to you, um, so to speak. Uh, so, you know, it's not like an ounce of this color and, a, you know, dash of this color. It's kind of like cooking, although cooking has more of a formula to it. I'm not a cook, so that's a bad example. I'm actually going to add a little bit more white 
because we're gonna need um, a lot of color to cover the canvas. And then I'm gonna add that in here and then add more burnt umber as well. I feel like we need more burnt umber, so let's just add some more. The reason why I don't want the base to be too pinky is because the the flowers that we're going to paint on top, it's an open garden rose, um, but it, that's going to be pink. So we don't want it to, you know, be the same color, obviously. Scrape out that burnt umber. And just try to mix it in as best as you can um, so that all of the colors look pretty unison. Let's see, let's compare. That's still really pink, so I'm gonna add more burnt umber and more yellow. So we can get a little bit more of that like taupey, mauvey color. Diana? Yes? While you're mixing the colors, do you think you could put the finished product on your right while, so people can see the colors Absolutely. of the finished piece? Absolutely. Oops, sorry. I think I hit my phone holder. So sorry about the shakes. Okay. Okay, so that looks a little bit more like that color. It's more subdued. So I'm just gonna try it out. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my canvas. I'm just gonna, gonna see. It's still more of that mauve like it's still more red than I like. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of brown and then we'll just kind of work with that color. That red is very strong. I didn't realize that I put so much of it. Okay, so I feel pretty good about this color. Um, so I'm just gonna work with it, Let's see. So yeah, it's a little bit more brown, if you guys can see compared to that. So I'm gonna work with this color. So I'm just gonna scrape off the excess paint on my canvas so we're not wasting it. And then I'm gonna get started on my base color. So you're gonna grab your, your biggest brush. If you have a flat brush, you can use that as well, um, but I'm just gonna use this round brush. I'm just gonna add a teeny bit of water on my brush. My brush is kind of stiff because I used it and then didn't, didn't fully clean it, I guess. <laughs> don't, don't be like me. Um, so okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my brush, not a ton, and just start covering the entire canvas. This part is the most thoughtless part. It is a lot of fun because you're just basically covering the entire canvas. Um, again, don't add too much water to your brush because we want this uh, we want this to dry pretty quickly since we want to paint the roses on top of it. And let me know if you guys have any questions um, while I paint. I will be focusing on obviously the the project that we're working on here. But if you have any questions, uh, please leave it in the chat box and I'll try to get to it. Can you, Diana, can you remind us of what colors you use to mix this color? Absolutely. So I used titanium white, a lot of, ti it's mostly titanium white and burnt umber. And then I also added a little bit of deep red and deep yellow. And then I'm using the round tip brush in size 12 just to cover the entire paper, entire canvas quickly. And you don't have to be perfect about this process. Just want a nice 
even thin coat um, so that we have the base covered. And if you guys want to, you can paint the sides um, of the canvas, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that unfinished. And if you can, try to cover the brush strokes as much as you can. Um, but it's also not a huge deal because we're gonna add a lot more on top. Okay. See. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it there like this. There's one white part. Okay, so I think I'm gonna leave it like this for now, and then I'm gonna move on to getting the rest of my palette ready um, so that we can create the floral piece. I'm gonna put this on the side, and I'll bring this piece back. So these are the colors. That, um, that we're gonna be pulling, creating together with our, our paint set right over here. Um, okay. So I kind of like to um, work in a rainbow order so I can kind of know where all of the paints are. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So let's do, I'm gonna flip. Actually, let's do that, okay. I'm gonna go this way. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna start with deep red on top. And then my brilliant red. And then I'm gonna do my deep yellow. and brilliant yellow. My sap green. You wanna make sure that you kind of have your paint um, in a corner because we want a lot of surface area to mix colors. And then light blue. Turquoise, just a little bit of turquoise. And then my burnt umber. Ivory black. Then titanium white. I'm gonna do the most of this color because I already know I'm gonna use a lot of it. Okay. So that is my order. I'm gonna let you guys catch up if you haven't um, already. So again, if you're just jumping in, we have deep red, brilliant red, deep yellow, brilliant yellow, sap green, light blue, turquoise, um, burnt umber, ivory black, and then titanium white are the 10 colors that I chose. All right, let's get started. Okay, so um, while your paint is still drying, mine is still drying, um, let's go ahead and mix our flower color. So um, actually, let me just go over the composition real quick. So I have three flowers here. And the reason why I chose three is because I feel like asymmetrical, you know, that feels more, it feels more um, organic to me or like not asymmetrical, but I guess like odd numbers. So I have my three flowers. One is facing forward, it's in full bloom. Um, this one's facing three quarters and then this one's facing totally away. So you have a little bit of variety there. Um, and then we have some cascading leaves, some filler flowers. 
And I also added some like white accents um, at the very end and then some dark accents as well, just to add more contrast and interest. And then I mixed up the palette and then I added some like scratchy um, textural colors on top. Um, and this, it, it was just really a preference thing, but you guys don't have to, if you want it to keep it a little bit more clean. Um, but I thought it was kind of fun in case you want to try it out. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and mix this color. I'm gonna grab my palette knife again. If you wanna clean it off, you can, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use that directly. I'm gonna pick up my white and then a little bit of that brilliant red, not the, not the deep red, but the brilliant red. And then a little bit of the brilliant yellow. And then I'm gonna try to mix it all in and see what color we get. I'm kind of going for like a baby pink peach type of color, which is why I added that yellow. Okay, so that color is looking, looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add, mix more. So I'm gonna add more white and a little bit of that brilliant red. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more red. And a tiny bit more of that yellow. That yellow is pretty strong, so I don't wanna add too much of it. Okay, so this is gonna be my, um, my petals. And then I also want to create um, the, the highlighted version of this. I'm going to add a separate color right here. I'm going to add some white. I don't want as much of this mix. I want mostly this one. So let's make a small batch. Um, yellow. And then since I already have the pink left over on my palette, I'm just going to mix that in with that. And the highlighted part is going to be, you know, where we're going to bring that part, that petal forward. And that's a little bit too yellow. So I'm going to add more of the brilliant red. And then more white. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for now. We might go back and fix it. Um, but for now, I feel like it's okay. And then let's see. Um, and then we're going to also add the shadow parts as well. So um, that part, actually, I'm going to do that later once we make sure that these two colors are correct. Um, otherwise, I think we, I feel pretty good about this. So I think I'm going to leave that. And then let's go on back to our canvas. I'm going to move my paints out of the way. So I have more space here. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my palette, I mean my canvas bag. It feels pretty, it feels pretty dry to me. So I think I'm gonna get started. Um, okay, so I'm gonna grab my my round brush in size one. This is one of the smallest one, if not the smallest one. I'm just gonna get it a little bit wet. And I'm gonna pick up my burnt umber. We're gonna do like a light, loose sketch. Um, so that we know where to add in our petals and things like that. So we're gonna start from biggest to small. So the biggest would be this flower right over here. Um, you know what, for this one, I think I'm gonna have that part showing. So let me move this. We're just using burnt umber here. So I'm gonna start off with this one. I'm gonna start with the, with the center of the flower. So I'm gonna just draw like a really, loose circle like this. Obviously not perfect by any means. It's all gonna get covered. But the main thing is you wanna keep it loose and um, not super dark. And I wanna just get a general idea of like how big this flower is gonna be. 
So I'm going to be drawing petal shapes with pointed edges. And just kind of um, start with the center out and have some of the petals behind the, the center petal. This could be really loose. It's kind of like a sunburst shape. Okay, so this Diana, is quite big. Yes. While you're drawing the flowers, can you remind everyone what the colors you used were to make that lighter petal pink? Yes, the lighter petal pink is titanium white, brilliant red, and a little bit of brilliant yellow to get that peachy pinky color. Mostly titanium white. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here. And then I'm gonna do my second biggest um, a uh, flower, which is this one right over here. Let's have it go up a little bit. I'm gonna start with the center of the flower, the stamen, and then do the same thing. Add some petal-like shapes. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. Remember, this is loose flower, so there's lots of um, imagination involved, and it doesn't have to be hyper realistic but the the general um the general point here is to have this flower face the left hand side so the petals would also face that side as well okay and then this um this um stem right over here i'm just gonna Add that. And then let's draw that last flower. I actually created this flower um, bigger than my first one. So I'm just gonna make this flower a little bit smaller. This one, you can't really see the center part. Um, so I'm just gonna have it face away. like that. And then I'm just going to also, um, just to remind myself that there's some, um, what do they call filler, filler flowers coming on the top side and the bottom left side. I'm just going to draw a line to remind myself that I'm going to add something there. Maybe just like a little one here. Okay. And that's literally how I, this is the only sketch I'm going to do. Okay. Perfect. Um, I will try to work a little bit slower, but I want to make sure that we finish this painting. So um, if you if you feel like this is a little bit too fast, I want to remind you guys that we're actually recording this and it will be on YouTube. So you can always come back and revisit this lesson as well. Okay, so let's come back to our, our color palette that we've created here. Um, I'm going to grab my brush in size eight now. Add a little bit of water to the, to the brush. And then I'm going to grab this color, um, which is gonna be the titanium white, brilliant red, and a little bit of the brilliant yellow. And I basically got a third of the brush covered with the paint. And I'm going to kind of follow this shape of the petal that I, that I lightly sketched in. And I wanna leave like some of that, I don't know if you guys can see that, um, that texture, I'm gonna leave some of that. And I actually feel like this is a little bit too light for me. So um, actually it looks okay now. It was just in the light. Okay, actually I'm gonna leave it. And then, yeah, you just wanna to continue to do that, making sure that the center of the flower, um, you don't paint that because that's gonna be uh, a different color. Here, I think I'm gonna bring in hopefully you guys can see at least a little bit of this 
in frame. Let me move this. Okay. And then you want to continue doing that with all the petals. Sometimes I like to leave some negative space. Negative space means basically like leaving the bottom, the, the paper underneath um, clear because I want to show that there's a separation and an overlap between these two petals. And I'm, I'm kind of painting from center out as well. Center to the, um, the edge of the petal. I'm gonna do that for the rest of my petals. And then again, leaving some negative space in between, um, between the layers of the petals facing outward. And um, the, the kind of the sketch that we did with that burnt umber, you can cover it a little bit as well, because we don't really, unless you want that to be a part of the painting, I'm just going to kind of cover it with my, with my petal colors. Yes, I'm glad that you like the texture. I think that is the strength of acrylic is that you get to kind of keep that texture. If you want more texture, you can always go ahead and add that modeling paste into your, your color as well and it'll thicken it up a little bit more. There's also a metallic paste as well included in your paint pack, which is amazing. Um, if you want more shimmer and things like that, um, there's so many different things that you can do with this paint set. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here. Um, and then I'm gonna move on to this, but I need more of that color. So I'm gonna mix it in. I'm gonna mix it in again in case you guys came in late. Um, this would be great to rewatch. So I'm gonna add my titanium white. Brilliant red and a little bit of the brilliant yellow. A little bit more of that red. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing with this flower. Um, I want to make sure I know that this circle right over here is going to be the center of the flower where the stamen is going to be. So I'm going to avoid that and draw up, not draw, but fill in some of that petals, leaving some negative space. And remember, again, like I really want to like emphasis on the fact that these are loose flowers. So really focus on like the brush strokes rather than like the perfect hyper realistic um, shape of the petals. We can kind of create that loose uh, petal, but separate them by leaving that negative space in between some of those petals. Right now, the, the petals that are kind of facing the, the stamen um, that are facing the left side are a little bit like C curves. They're a little bit more open than a typical C, but they have that C-like shape, if that helps. Diana? Yes. We have a couple of people wondering if you have any tips for choosing a, a different color scheme if they wanted to switch up the colors they were painting with do you have any 
uh, tips for how they could go about doing that? Yes, actually, it looks really cool. Um, Michael's actually has the same this same canvas, but like a black one. So you can do a white and like a you know light color flower on top of the black. I think that could look really cool. Um, you can also do like yellow with blue. I feel like even though yellow and blue are not exactly um, complementary colors on the color wheel, it's actually orange and blue. It still looks really good together. So I feel like you can go that route as well. Um, I would kind of avoid doing green flowers because Typically people associate green with leaves. So I would just kind of avoid that color, but otherwise, um, otherwise I feel like, I feel like you can kind of try different color colorways for sure. Is there a specific color that people are asking about that would match or was it just like a general question? I think it was a general question. Um, some people were saying they weren't too fond of the beige color. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that your new piece is more on the pink side. Will the background mm -hmm. end up looking more like the first one or is it going to end up looking a little different? I'm sorry, can you say, oh, I can't, I can't. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, some people were saying they weren't too fond of the beige background in the, mm -hmm. in the first example piece, but this one mm -hmm. that you're doing now looks more pink. Mm -hmm. In. Yes. So the so the actual under underneath the um, the the dry brushing texture that we're going to do is this color. If you want to keep this color, then you don't have to add that dry, dry brushing color, if that makes sense. If that makes sense. Um, yes, that's perfect. OK, hold on. OK, so there is another. Hmm, how do I show? Someone was asking to hold the brush further from the canvas. I think whenever you're painting, your hand covers, from our perspective, it covers mm. not exactly your brushing. So if you could just do a few strokes holding your hand out to the side. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let me definitely do that. It's always good to hear because, of course, like I'm focusing on the painting. But let me try to maybe a little bit closer and have it at an angle. I'll move it back so you guys can see, but this will be kind of a skewed version, but hopefully you can see the brush stroke. Does this help? Hopefully. Okay. Yes, that works. Okay. So at the, the base, like the bottom part of the pedal, I am, I'm kind of pressing my brush down a little bit and then I'm bringing it to the point as it, as we're um, kind of fluffing out the edges of the, of the pedal. Same thing here, I'm just gonna kind of press it down and then lift up as I get closer to the edge of the pedal. Hopefully this angle helps a little bit more. People seem to really like this angle. Oh, okay, should I keep it this way? Uh, maybe because until, it, unless it doesn't work for something in the future, I think it looks great here. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm definitely fine to do that. Um, just keep in mind that, you know, obviously the angles look all funky, but as long as you guys can see the brush, that's completely fine. Okay. So I think I'm going to stop here for the base of my petals. I'm going to go ahead and actually work on the shadow um, before I do the highlights. Um, here, let me. Okay. Let me grab my paint palette and the shadows are going to be this color right over here. It has a little bit of that blue, blue color mixed in with the pink. So I'm going to keep my original pink and then I'm just going to actually I feel like I'm running out of paint really quickly. So I'm going to mix a little bit more of that same color. Actually, I feel like I can use that mob color as well. Okay, so I'm going to add some titanium white. And then I'm gonna add, cause I have a little bit more of that mauve mixture left. If you guys don't have the mauve mixture left, basically it's the same color as we did, which is the white, uh, titanium white, brilliant red and brilliant yellow and the burnt umber. So that's this taupey color that I'm gonna add um, into the white. I'm actually gonna add more red cause there was a lot of brown there.
it's basically like the, yeah, the base petal color plus the burnt umber. And then I'm going to add um, a blue. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna add one more color. Sorry guys. I think I'm gonna add a brilliant blue. So this is the brilliant blue. I'm just gonna add a little bit on the side. And then if you like this, this kind of look right here where you have the pink and the blue mixed in and it's not fully blended together, you can see more examples here, then you don't wanna use your palette knife. You can grab your brush. I'm gonna be using the, the size four brush. Okay. And then using my brush directly, grab the blue and then grab the pink and then just kind of mix it in a little bit with the, with the, with the brush. So it's not fully blended, if that makes sense. Um, and then with this one, we're going to kind of go underneath um, the petals. So this is the top layer of this flower, right? So we're gonna kind of go around the, oh, this is a little bit too, I think there was too much white. So I'm gonna add actually a little bit more, a little bit of black and a little bit of blue. I mean, uh, a little bit of brown. And then more blue. I want it just a little bit darker than the, the blue that I have. Okay, I'm gonna go, behind the petals just a little bit. Sorry, now now this, this phone is really close to uh, my, my brush. So I'm just gonna kind of go around, around my phone holder here. And I'm only adding like a tiny bit of accent. The bottom of this petal. It's like an impression of a shadow rather than it being like, like a, like a realistic shadow. And then a little bit on this side as well. Still is getting really, add more black. Sorry, I have to like kind of go around because this brush is very close to the phone holder now. If it makes um, it easier for you, then feel free to move it up. Okay, I feel like you guys can't see my, okay, I'll try to, I, I, I do really want to show the, the brush stroke, obviously, but it's, it's kind of hard to achieve all of the things, but um, we'll leave it here for now because this part is, is important to learn. Okay, so I've literally just outlined some of the petals, not a, not a lot of it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in more of that, or I'm gonna add in some of that deep red that we had, and I'm gonna add, make it like more of a purpley color. and then add more black as well. So I have like a dark purple color, if you guys can see right here. Diana, people are curious about your placements of those shadows and darker colors. Do you have a certain method you're following? Um, no, I have really, I'm just kind of picking random petals. Um, this one, well, it, it, right here, I kind of picked random petals here. This one, they, I just added it here because the original photo reference that I had had more shadow on this side. Um, and then the original photo reference had more shadow on this side. Um, right now, I'm honestly not working with the photo reference. I'm kind of using my, the first painting that I did and I'm kind of going around that. Um, so it will definitely, my basically my answer in short would be that having a photo reference would be super helpful um, otherwise, I'm just kind of going with the flow with with um, with adding the shadows. The only main thing is that you want to make sure that the shadows are around the petals, like the outside of the petals, rather than the inside of the petals, because the inside of the petals is where we're going to add more highlights. Um, but other than that, it's pretty it's pretty random. Does that answer your question? Hold on. Um, yes, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Okay, sorry, this part, I think I'm gonna have to bring it up a little bit right here. Hopefully that, hopefully you guys can still see the brush strokes. Um, but anyways, if you see me doing this, it's because I'm trying to avoid hitting the, 
the camera. Okay. Um, actually, let's go ahead. Let's let's leave this on the side and let's go ahead and add in that stamen in the center because I think that will help um, figure out where the shadows go in the center of the flower. So I'm gonna grab my size one again. I'm going to um, take off that brown, that burnt umber that we had before, clean it off with water. And then I'm going to grab this um, deep yellow here. You don't need a ton. And then a little bit of the burnt umber. And this one, I also want it to be a little bit like, you can see some of the different paint strokes and not super blended. So I'm using my brush for that. And then I'm going to, um, yeah, with the yellow, with the deep yellow and the burnt umber color, I'm going to kind of dab here. Let's move to the side here so you guys can see. I'm using the tip of my brush and then dabbing the point. Hopefully you guys can see that. Actually, I want it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of black and then using the point to kind of make little dots, the edges. And then I'm gonna go back to my burnt umber and yellow. So I'm literally kind of like mixing the colors as I, as I paint and do the same thing the outside of this stamen. And then remove some of that off my brush using my paper towel, grab my yellow, and then dab it at the center. Same thing here, dab it at the center. And then I'm gonna grab some of that brown as well. So basically you want the outside of the stamen to be a little bit darker than the center of the, the stamen. And then I'm gonna remove that, that um, the additional paint off my brush again. And then I'm gonna grab the yellow, just that bright yellow. And then I'm gonna add some of that at the center. And again, you can kind of see the pattern here, but it's a little bit, it's, it's not like perfect, like, oh, like perfect circle. You just kind of want to dab and add some of these accents throughout the flower. And that's what keeps that loose style, kind of like the shadow that we were talking about earlier. Um, it's a little bit random while being inten uh, intentional at the same time. But the main technique here is that you're going from dark on the outside and light in the center. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there. Um, and that gives me a better idea of where to place the shadows now that we have the, the stamens painted in. And if you kind of have this blob of paint at the edge of your brush like mine, you can, you can um, like roll your brush out on your, on your palette to get that excess blob out and try to sharpen the tip like so. I'm gonna get more of that purpley color. I'm gonna get more of that, that deep red, and then a little bit of the black. If you want it to be a little bit more clean than mine, then you could definitely use your palette knife. I'm just kind of using my brush. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add more shadows to my petals. Again, to keep that loose style, you want it a little bit random, but the main thing here is that you want it behind the petals in between each layers. Layers meaning like this is the top layer, this is the, you know, the layer under that. Um, you want to make sure it's underneath each layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually go back and, and um, go back into that pink that I had earlier. Add some of that behind as well. And kind of soften up that shadow. So you can still see that there's some paint that aren't fully blended. Um, and I kind of like the way that looks. Do that. Okay, so I feel like that one add one more here. 
And then the same thing, I'm gonna go back into my center flower, add some shadows. I'm gonna add more in the center of the flower in between the petals right here. Can you see the tip? Is that okay? Okay. Um, you can use a hair dryer on your on your paint, um, but acrylic does dry pretty quickly, um, so it shouldn't take too long to to dry. If you feel like acrylic dries too quickly, though, and you actually want to slow down your drying time, there is another paste included in your kit to slow down that that process as well. Um, whichever is more helpful to you. Okay, and then now, now that I've added some of the, those more contrasting shadows, um, I'm gonna go back to that pink that we had, which is a lighter pink, and then blend in some of the shadows so it looks a little bit softer. Oops, I'm sorry. The edge of my brush is hold, hitting that. So I'm gonna move this here so it doesn't do that as much. Hopefully you guys can still see. Okay, and then so yeah, there's some more dimensions in between the petals now. And then my last flower, which is that one, I'm gonna add just a little bit more. I already added some of that blue tone. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. I don't think it needs a ton around some of the edges of the petals. Oops, that's too much. So if you feel like there's too much of a darker shadow, like right here, you can go back and mix it with the lighter color. And then that'll kind of soften up a little bit more. So that's another nice thing about acrylic is that you can always fix up something that you're not like crazy about. Like for example, if you feel like this is too dark, um, then you can go back to, oops, remove that paint. You can go back to the previous color and soften it up a little bit more like so. Okay. So now I'm going to add the highlighted part. So with the same brush, this is the size four. I'm gonna um, clean it out with, with my water cup right over here and paper towel. Okay. And then the highlight color that we mixed earlier, this is the titanium white, brilliant red, brilliant yellow color. And actually, I want to make it kind of streaky as well. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that yellow using my brush and a little bit of that titanium white. And then I'm going to um, kind of highlight some of the petals, the top of the petals. Sorry, I'm trying to read the... The, the shadow colors are going to be... Um, are going to have a little bit of black, burnt umber, and the and the uh, deep red, and then I also pulled a new color, which is the deep blue. So th those are my shadow colors. Okay, so going back to the highlight color, um, let's grab that, and then let's go ahead and highlight some of the petals. And again, it's really helpful to have a photo reference. Obviously, I do not. So this one's very like abstract slash imaginative, um, but I did have a photo reference that I used for the original painting. So I'm kind of going off of that. But I'm using just the tip of my brush. Again, if you have this glob of paint that you don't want, you can swirl it on your, on your palette to get some of that excess paint off and then use the tip. Um, I want you guys to see, let me do the further away view. I think the brush feels okay, but I want you guys to be able to see the, the first painting as well. Okay. 
So this is my photo reference that I'm going off of. Let me add more titanium white. Diana? Yes. Is there a trick to where you're placing the highlights compared to the shadows? Yeah, so top of, the, so the highlights are gonna go on top of the, um, the top of the petals. I know it's really, I, I should have had the photo reference. I don't know why I didn't <laughs> bring that. Uh, but basically like, I do have some of them next to each other cause I want more of that pop of contrast. So that's why I have some of the shadows next to the highlights. But the main part about the shadows is that you wanna have them to distinguish the, the layers of the petal. So like the top layer versus the next layer. And then the highlights of the shadow, I mean, sorry, the highlights of the petals would be on top of the petals, if that makes sense. So I did add a highlight here next to the shadow to kind of make that part pop. Um, but you could also add it to more of like the center of the petal as well to add more of that highlight, um, if that makes sense. Hopefully that that's clear. But I'm sorry, I should have had the photo reference. That would have been a lot more easier to, to follow. Um, so I highly recommend <laughs> using a photo reference. Um, but the main thing is that the shadows are underneath the petals and the highlights are on top of the petals. Now I feel like this is getting a little bit too yellow. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that red. Mix it in. Okay. And then I also, um, I'm also gonna add a little bit more of the contrast action in the center. So I realized that I didn't add a ton there. So let me go ahead back to my, before we move on to the, um, the, the leaves. Okay, I'm gonna grab my brush in size one. And then I'm gonna grab black and mix it into that shadow color. And then add just a little bit of black around the outside of the stamens. Okay, and I'm also using the, oh, sorry, I don't know if you guys can see. I'm gonna do the dot, the dot um, strokes. And then try to keep this one loose as well so it's not like a perfect circle. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the leaves. Um, if you find that your palette is really full with paint, then you can absolutely erase, um, clean your palette before you mix, but I have a little bit of space. So I um, just wanted to put it out there because normally when I paint, I actually have it all over my palette. So if that's you, you can definitely go ahead and clean it with paper towel and a wet paper towel. Um, so let me actually clean out my palette knife really quick. Was there any other questions while I clean off my palette knife? Um, no, not too many questions. I did want to chime in and say that uh, we have reached the hour mark. We're totally oh. fine to continue and just want to remind everyone that if they need to go, this class is being recorded and it will be uploaded to michaels.com slash classes tomorrow, as well as our YouTube channel, which is just Michaels stores. And um, so if you need to run, that's totally fine, but we can move forward. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I was, I was talking too much. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to speed up. That was honestly the most time consuming part. So let's go through the leaves. Um, so I'm gonna grab my palette knife. I'm gonna do the sap green and a little bit of the black. 
and make a darker green. Also going to grab a little bit of that turquoise as well. And I am using my palette knife because for this one, I want it to be a well blended flat color. Okay, so there's my green. Um, we might need to mix some more. So actually, I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more paint. Again, the, the colors are sap green, black, and a little bit of the turquoise. A little bit more of the sap green. Okay. So I'm going to grab my brush in size um, four, no, sorry, size six. Size six, I'm gonna clean it off. And then, oh gosh, now I've moved the phone. So I'm going to place some of the, um, the leaves around the center flower to really focus, to bring attention on that. Um, so let's go ahead and start with this leaf right over here, right here. I'm gonna basically draw a line, which is gonna be the center of the leaf. And I'm going to press down at the bottom and then bring the tip up to a point. And then the same thing on the other side, press down and then bring it to a point trying to meet. I know this is a little bit advanced. So if you don't feel comfortable doing this uh, technique, then, then you definitely can do it manually as well. Um, but let me show you guys one more time. I'll show you pretty much throughout the rest of the, the leaf painting. You, oh, sorry, you have one petal here, if this helps you. I honestly sometimes skip this part, so. Um, but you have this line here. You start with your your brush. Well, again, okay. So you're gonna press your brush down, and then lift as you bring it to a point. And you want to kind of curve in towards that line that you drew. And then on the other side as well, you press down, and you lift, and bring and meet the points together. And that's how you create a leaf. This might be a little bit more difficult because it's kind of behind the, the flower. So if you want it to be a little bit further away, you can bring the, the, um, the stem down and then start from, you know, after you have like a little bit of space in between, you can start here, smash your brush down and then lift. And then same thing on the other side, smash it down. And you can see that I really slowed down towards the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep going so we can finish the painting, which is important. And then I'm gonna draw this branch in. You could also just draw, this would be like only showing one side of the leaf, which is why I just did the one. Um, Going to add some more leaves here. Let's do. I try to leave a little bit of negative space in the center part of the leaf, um, just to show a separation. But you don't want it to be like a huge negative space. Negative space being that the underneath layer is showing. And I'm going to add filler, filler flowers here. So I'll leave that and then I'll maybe I'll do one more here. Okay, and then a little one here. Diana? Yes. Can you remind us of what brush size and what paint colors you're using for the leaves? 
Yes, the, um, the brush size is a size six. Um, basically, you can honestly use any brush size, but the size of the, the brush will determine how big your leaves are. And then for the colors of the, the leaves, I'm using sap green, black, and turquoise to get that like nice, dark, rich green. And you know what, I'm just gonna add one leaf here because, or actually I'm, I'm gonna add the, uh, the bottom part of the, the flower I think is important. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but like tiny ones. If it's too hard for you to create tiny ones using the size six, you could also size down as well. But this would be the, the bottom part of the flower. Okay. And now let's go ahead and add the filler flowers. I'm gonna bring my camera back up. I'm sorry if it's a little bit dizzying. I'm trying to show all, all part of the angles here. <laughs> now my camera stand won't uh, hold straight. Okay, we're gonna, just gonna have to work with this, but um, the filler flowers are essentially gonna be right here and right here. It's anywhere there's a little bit of empty space that we wanna fill up. So I'm going to grab my um, size four for this one. Um, let's go ahead and take some of that paint off. That was there before. And filler flowers, feel free to use any any colors really. Like I'm just gonna use um, the light blue and turquoise color because again, I'm using the color palettes that my mom likes, but you can use yellow, you can use purple, um, red, whatever colors, um, whatever color resonates with you, you can definitely go ahead and switch that up. But I'm gonna go ahead and use blue and turquoise. Um, I'm gonna mix that in on the side. And for this one, I also don't want it to be like super blended because I like kind of the different colors showing through. So I'm not gonna blend too much there, but that's gonna be my color. And then I'm gonna grab my size four, again, round tip brush, grab some of that. And then um, ideally it'd be nice if my paint was a little bit more dry, but I think we could work with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some filler flowers. So. Wherever you see um, empty space, like right over here, I'm going to have the flowers come out this way. If this is too complicated to draw the flowers without um, knowing exactly where you're gonna go, you can draw like a really light line as well. So you know generally where to follow. And I'm, going, I'm doing the same motion as the, um, as the, as the leaves, except I'm closing it up and making it a little bit round and chubbier. I'm gonna add a little bit of white actually to this. Oh, that's a lot of white, it's okay. I'm also gonna add a little bit of the yellow. I want a little bit more green. Sorry, okay. So I'm gonna keep going. And it's actually nice to have a little bit of color variance in these filler flowers, because I feel like it makes it look more interesting. And don't worry, we're gonna go back and add um, the leaves, the branches that hold the filler flowers together. So don't worry about that too much. I'm going to basically draw some some of these filler flowers that are close together. And then I'm gonna make some happen, uh, draw some right over here. So I'm gonna draw this line so I know generally where it's going to be. And um, if you guys forgot this, this type of technique, you basically smash down and lift up to a point and then you do the same thing on the other side as well. And I'm actually going to, well, actually, let's add more here as well. 
I'm actually going to um, add more white and yellow. So we have more color variety here. Okay, this yellow, every single time I've used it, I've noticed how strong it is. It comes out, it's just very strong. So just use only a tiny bit of that, that brilliant yellow. Okay. And then I'm just gonna keep adding a little bit more. Some of them, um, you don't want all of them to be layered on top of each other, but you want some of them to to touch because it looks a little bit more organic that way. And there you go, that's my filler flowers. And then I'm going to grab my brush in size one. And then dip it back into that green that I had. And then um, kind of create the branches that, that are underneath the filler flowers that would connect them together. So they're not just like floating circles. And you want them to point back to the center flower. Just using the point of the brush as well. So you can see that not a ton of branches are poking through. You just wanna show a tiny bit to indicate that they are connected. Um, oops, I'm sorry. To show where they're, where they're um, coming from. Okay, and then from this point, we can go ahead and add a little bit more small leaves in areas where you want to add a little bit more. So for my first painting, I have, can we use any acrylic paints? You can use um, acrylic paints that you have, that's totally fine, but the ones that I'm using, if you want to use those, that's gonna be included in the materials guide. Um, so some of the smaller leaves are gonna be right here and here and then on this side as well. Um, I kind of like to, I kind of like the different size variety because I think it makes it look a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna use a smaller brush. The first, the bigger leaves we use a size six, but for the smaller leaves, we're gonna use a size one. And then I'm actually going to mix a little bit more green as well. So I'm gonna do the sap green and a little bit of the yellows. So we have a little bit more variety in our greens as well as the size. Okay. So let's go ahead. I think we can add a little bit here. So I'm gonna draw my, okay, if you have that glob again, you could just swirl your brush. And I have my, my branch come out like this. And then I'm gonna do the same technique that I did earlier where we smash down the bottom. You could add a little bit of space in between. And then bring it to the point at the top. Then I'm gonna add some right over here. And you can see a lot of the leaves are kind of like, like curving outward. None of them are sticking straight out because I kind of like that organic curve when it comes to painting flowers, um, showing that there's a little bit of gravity and movement there. And I don't know why I just, I feel like twos always look kind of awkward to me. So I'm gonna add a third leaf. Okay, and then I think I'm gonna add just a little bit right over here. So it will come out behind this big flower. Okay. 
Okay. And there you go. Um, you can definitely stop here if you'd like, but if you want a messier look, hold on. Oh, okay. I know what happened with my phone stand. Sorry guys, let me just go ahead and fix this really quick so that we can have, we can have a more um, tight phone stand holder. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we can stop here if you'd like to keep it kind of more clean, but if you want to add these um, kind of like veiny white lines, and then I also added some black accents and the brush strokes as well. I'm just gonna go over that really quickly in case you want to add that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just use my white, uh, just use my uh, brush in size one. I'm gonna clean it off really quickly. And then grab some more white. And basically you're just gonna draw like lines and leaves and add some around the petals, like really randomly. <laughs> Thank you guys for just going over that one hour mark. Um, I apologize if you are like, why is she taking so long? I realized that this is, I just literally added everything I could think of in one painting because I wanted to teach you guys all the techniques. Um, so anyways, let's get into it. We're gonna grab white into this brush. I'm gonna swirl it again so I can get that nice pointed tip. And I'm going to just kind of draw like, I'm gonna call them ghost leaves because that's kind of what they look like. You can add uh, veins into your existing leaves like this. Um, that was really, that was a little bit thicker than I wanted, but it's okay. You can kind of like outline them and like have it like off centered because I think that makes it look a little bit interesting. And ideally it is nice if your painting was already fully dry, but mine is not, but we're just gonna work with it anyway. Um, but if your painting was fully dry, then it wouldn't mix up your colors. So if it does, you can always, you know, go back, take that green off and then, and pick up that white again. So I'm just going to do just only a few. I don't want to like overdo it. And you're literally like just drawing in leaves or um, outlining them a little bit off center, drawing the veins of the leaves. And you don't want to do that to every single leaf. Um, but if you have some here, you know, you don't want to like only have them here. You want to also have them on the other side. So you want to have a balanced painting. So I'm going to add some on this side. And honestly, I feel like I can stop with the leaves here and I'm just gonna add a little bit of white accents on top of only the center flower because this is the, the one I want to highlight the most. So I'm literally going in and randomly outlining some of the petal shapes. And if you have some green that you picked up from the leaves, make sure you take that off because I don't think it looks good on your, your flower. Okay, so I think I'm literally just gonna stop here with the white. And then you could also do the same thing with black. You can um, add black outlines, but I think I'm just going to make a little bit of um, the, the stamens a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go in and add black dots around the stamen. And then, yeah, that is basically my additional lines. And if you are interested in adding these, um, these brush strokes, 
I think I'm not going to add it in this one because I kind of like the way that this looks and I think there's already a lot going on. But if you are interested in adding this on top, then basically what you do is you grab your palette knife, you want to mix in some of the colors. So for me, I have my pinks and the blues. If you have a different color palette, obviously yours would be different, but you basically would mix these two colors together and lightly scrape it on top of your your um, the background color. So you want to be careful about um, you know brushing over your your heroes, which are your flowers. You can brush over some of the leaves if you want, but try to avoid it. And then after that, you get a dry brush and smooth it out with your brush. So that's basically how you create this type of texture. Um, I know someone mentioned earlier that they they didn't like this. So if you don't like that, then you could keep it clean and keep the background color as is. Um, but yeah, th these are the two different styles and looks that you can achieve using basically a very similar um, similar uh, flower painting. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I know this was a, a lot of techniques and a lot of information um, trying to read your guys' comments, but that is it. I hope you guys were able to learn something new. Um, I know that this is a ton of information. So again, if you want to go back um, and uh, go back and revisit this video lesson and try out some of the different techniques, um, try out different color palettes. There's so many colors that are included within this, um, this bundle. So thank you so much for watching this uh, lesson with me. I would love to connect with you guys after this workshop as well. Again, my Instagram is at Diana A. Wren. And I also have a newsletter where I send weekly art tips. Um, thank you so much. I'm so glad you, that you guys had fun. Again, if you guys didn't finish, um, then you could go back and rewatch the lesson. But thank you so much for joining me. I would love to connect with you guys on Instagram. And I hope you guys have a great evening and Valentine's Day. <laughs> thank you.